So our past few handouts we've looked at, our past few lectures we've looked at the um, analysis of one categorical variable. Today we're continuing our discussion of a sampling distribution, specifically the sampling distribution of p hat, and we're going to look at it in the context of an example. So for this example, there is a population of Florida registered voters and of those Florida registered voters, 2.8% said they have a minor party affiliation. So that means that this is our population. And because this is the number referring to that population, this would be P. So if I were to write P in its decimal format, it would be 0 0.0828. Now, what we want to look at today is three different sampling distributions when three different sample sizes have been taken. So for graph A, we have samples of size 100 taken. For graph B, we have samples of size 250 taken. And then finally for graph C, we have samples of size 500 taken. Now these graphs are all made up of a thousand different samples, but the samples themselves are from 100 people, 250 people, and 500 people. Then, because it's a sampling distribution, remember what's actually being collected and graphed are a lot of different p hat values. So these distributions are essentially p hats and where they fall, they're not people. So we want to look at what happens to those three areas that we were interested in. The mean, or we talked about that being the center, the standard deviation or how much variability or spread. And we also want to see what happens um, to the shape of the sampling distribution as we change sample size. So we know that P is 0 0.028 and that's the value that we're going to end up wanting to estimate with P hat. When I look at these distributions, it appears that the center is here for this distribution and this one it might be approximately here and then this last one it's about right here so it appears that they're all about 0 0.03 so as the sample size increases so as n increases the center actually appears to stay the same And specifically, you'll notice that it appears to be the same as P, which is valuable for us because if we're using P hat to estimate P, and we know that all of the P hat values center themselves around that, we know that P hat itself is a good estimate of P because it's naturally drawn to it. Then the next one, when we're talking about variability or standard deviation or the spread, when we look at this first one, it goes from 0 to about 0 0.08. And then the next one, increasing in sample size, goes from 0 to maybe 0 0.065, so it's decreased. And then finally, the largest sample size ranges from about 0 0.01 to approximately 0 0.055. So as n increases, it appears that the value of standard deviation or spread uh, would decrease. And we talked about how that would be, um, that would make sense because the formula for standard deviation, remember, is P times one minus P over N. And so if you were to calculate standard deviation for all three of these graphs, you would also notice that the value of standard deviation, which uses this formula, would also decrease. But we actually notice it in the physical spread or the variation on the graphs, which is essentially what standard deviation measures. And then finally, when you look at the shape of the distribution, you'll notice that this one doesn't have much of a bell shape to it. This one is becoming more bell-shaped or normal, and very bell-shaped. So 
as n increases, the graph begins to look more and more like the bell shape. So as n increases, the graphs look more normal. And remember that the way to get to that normal distribution is to make sure that both um, n times p and n times 1 minus p are greater than or equal to 10. And for the first two graphs, because p is 0 0.028, I could just check the first one, and I'll write it in a different color. So when n is equal to 100, n times the p would be 100 times 0 0.028. And since that's less than 10, it would not be bell-shaped. So then if I were looking at the calculation when we had n equal to 250, we would have 250 times 0 0.028. And again, that's less than 10, and that's why it's not that bell-shaped. But when we get to the last one, and we have... 500 times 0 0.028, it would be greater than 10, as would n times 1 minus p. Therefore, the last one made it to that bell shape. 